Hi hey everyone, it's Remy again from Random Street Medic. I know a lot of you saw online what happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin this week. So tonight we're going to talk about gunshot wounds. I'm going to do this real quick. So we're not going to talk about the head strike that happened because that's very difficult to manage in the field. Uh, but what I am going to talk about is the two things that I saw. One of which was treating somebody while gunfire is still happening and not moving to cover. And the other is the type of treatments. So first and foremost, if you're under fire, when you're taking, somebody, when you're taking care of somebody, you want to move to cover. So you don't want to treat somebody in the middle of the street. If you have to, slap on a tourniquet, slap on a chest seal, and then move. Uh, if the person can walk, make them walk. If they can't, get either a sheet or a buddy or someone else to help carry them to a place of safety. You don't want to be treating somebody while you're taking fire. So let's just get right into this. In that video, you see an individual struck in the arm. So let's talk about uh, an, an extremity tourniquet. So I have with me a, uh, a tourniquet. That's a, uh, a tactical tourniquet. Comes in some little pouch. Looks just like this. It's real quick. So if you remember, the injury happened somewhere along, along the elbow. So you want to take your tourniquet. One. You want to put it above the inside of the injury. You want to make it as tight as possible. Cinch it down. So that way it's velcroed in. You're going to take this stick right here, which is the windlass, and you're going to go about 540 degrees with it, which is about uh, one and a half to two turns. Uh, and then you're going to lock it into here and cover it. If this does not stop bleeding, put another tourniquet on top of it. So first tourniquet, if it doesn't stop bleeding, put on a second tourniquet. After you do that, you want to make sure you check a pulse. Don't do this again unless you're in cover and not being shot at. So and it's the same deal with the leg. So say that he's laying down and you can't slip this under. You can't slip this under as easily. You can't slip it up his leg. Take it right out. Take it right out. Put it in. So say his, his injury is here at the knee, strap it down as tight as you can go, then take that windlass, turn it about 540 degrees, which is about, two, again, one and a half to two turns, get it locked up in there, put it there. Also of note, from another video that I saw, please do not spray your gunshot wound patient in the face with water. I don't know what that deal is about, but it has nothing to do with treating bullet wounds, and it's not going to help your patient. Drowning your patient, waterboarding them, not good. Alright, The next application is a, uh, jun is a junctional wound. And by junctional, it's anywhere where an extremity meets the trunk of the body. So these are difficult places to put a, uh, a tourniquet on and you're not going to be able to. What you really want to do is you want to take something like either the palm of your hand or a knee and you want to put it right here. So if they're bleeding right here, you want to put as much pressure on that as you can. You want to use something like a surgical pad or a trauma pad, and you want to hold pressure right there. When you get the chance to, if you have a two-inch roll of gauze, or if you have trauma gauze or hemostatic gauze, you can use that. You want to unroll this, and this is where that video that I wrote, uh, made a while back that said don't use tampons. This is exactly why. Don't use a tampon here. It won't open up enough to actually stop bleeding. What you want to do is take this. So I'm just going to pretend that he has he shot here in the armpit. And you just want to keep pushing it in. You want to keep going, and going, and going, and going until you really can't go anymore. And just keep pushing this into the wound. Once you get to a point where you can't go anymore, you want to put like a tegaderm on it. So you want to do a, um, you want to take a, a larger uh, roll of gauze and you want to secure it in place. You can put tape over it. Uh, what you want to do is you want to, again, push as much of this thin gauze in there as possible, and you just want to keep going until you can't fit any more in there anymore. So that was the uh, tourniquet application. That's a junctional wound application. You can do that here in the, in the groin area as well, so both shoulders and groin. When it comes to a torso strike, what you want to do is you want to check to make sure if there's an exit wound. So you want to check their back, you want to check their, their front, and their sides. You want to make sure there's no exit wound anywhere else. If there is, you have to do two. You have to do, uh, seal up two wounds. Now, a halo. And there's a whole bunch of other versions out there, but this is a halo seal. They make a whole bunch of different ones, either vented or non-vented. 
what you want to do with this is you open it up and some of them are a circle, some of them are a square. So if they have a, if they're shot in the torso or in the chest somewhere, you're gonna tell, as long as they're conscious, you're gonna tell them to take a deep breath in, take a breath out, and then sticky side down and press it down. And you're gonna hold it there and let them take another breath in again. So if they have another wound on the back, same deal. They're gonna breathe out. And on that exhalation, as soon as they're done, you're gonna slap that right on, sticky side down, and you're gonna seal that in place. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna stop the lung from collapsing. Um, unfortunately, with any kind of torso, whether it be chest or abdomen, uh, you can't do a lot in terms of stopping bleeding other than placing one of these on and, and holding pressure. So let's say you don't have a tourniquet. Let's see what else we can use. Now you can use a belt, belts get a little difficult. What you can use is a triangle bandage. Take your triangle bandage, unfold it, make it into a nice wide strip, just like this. You wanna come in? So you're gonna go, make a square knot, one, two, you want to take a sturdy stick. I'm using a screwdriver. You want to make a windlass out of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to stick it under, go over, and you're going to twist. And you're going to do it, again, up to 540 degrees. When you're ready to stop, you're going to tie it in place with the, uh, you're going to tie it in place with this gauze. Either to the, uh, you want to do it to the tourniquet itself or to something nearby. That way it, st that way it stops the, um, it stops it from rotating back. So this is a makeshift. This is a makeshift tourniquet. This is really only should be used in the event that you don't have a tourniquet uh, available to you that's dedicated for that purpose. And the last thing now, if you don't have a chest seal, any plastic will do. I love Ziploc bags for that reason because you can keep gear in it, and in the event that someone has a, uh, a chest wound of some kind or an abdominal wound. You can use these uh, to put over the wound, and it's the same thing. The person takes a breath out, you push this against the wound, and then that's that. What you want to do with it with these, since there's no sticky side, is you want to take tape around all four sides. Some videos and some teachers say that you uh, leave off a third side for the burp or the vent. Honestly, uh, if you're in the field, four sides is better, and if they develop difficulty breathing, just pull up the tape a little bit and then vent it that way. Uh, Otherwise, you're gonna have to start monitoring, the, you're monitoring your patient a lot more frequently. So after your patient is taken care of, you want to evacuate the area, get them to the definitive care. The definitive care is a hospital. So it's either you're calling 911 to get a truck or you're putting them in a personal vehicle if it's faster and getting them straight to a hospital. So once again, my name is Remy. This was Andrew, my partner. So this is Random Street Medic.